Hi, my name is Dan. Uh, this video is part of a short series of videos that I'm doing about um, getting to grips with uh, level editing in uh, Unreal. And it's also intended to be kind of the introduction to Unreal and some of the basic concepts in Unreal. Unreal's huge, so there's always more to, to learn and to find out. I wouldn't say that I know everything, um, but I do feel like I know quite a lot of the beginning stuff. Um, so in this uh, particular one, I want to talk about static meshes. Uh, so if you've watched the other videos in this series, you'll have seen that I have talked about static meshes uh, in the past and just kind of try and explain what they are and a bit about things that you can do with them. So um, uh, I'm going to go into the starter contents. Let's zoom in. It's always good to be able to see what's going on and uh, i'm going to go to props and here's one of my favorite things which is the couch i can't see everything there we go um uh, saying it's sm couch and in brackets it's telling you what kind of thing it is and it's a static mesh okay now you may have come across this term before and you may know what that means um or you may not um but you might have come across the term 3d model or 3d modeling so um a static mesh is unreal's uh terminology for a 3d model that doesn't have moving parts um, and in fact, I think distinctively, it can't be manipulated or have its shape changed live during the game in any way, um, which is why it's static. Mesh is another word for a 3D model. Um, and let's uh, hopefully demonstrate this. Um, I'm going to zoom back out again. Um, because uh, static meshes are generally me actually made up of triangles. So I'm... Um, Going to focus on the couch, which is my—I don't know why—is my favourite uh, static mesh to play around with, and um, it looks like a couch, but it's got a shape in three D. Now, if we go into um, wireframe rather than lit, that will show us the triangles that make up this shape that's being rendered. This uh, this couch, and there's quite a few of them there. Um, yeah, but, it, you know, it's enough to give the shape. And this is how I always feel like I'm checking what I'm saying all the time whilst I'm saying it. This is how almost all 3D graphics are done, uh, is done using, uh, using meshes like this or 3D models like this. And it's a, um, it's a collection of triangles and they're linked together. They've got the edges connected to each other so that you, you get a seamless shape. Let's go back to um, that's not perspective. Go to, back to the, the lit. But if we go to unlit, it should look quite odd. There we go. It's kind of flat looking. And then we've got to go back to the lit version, which is where it looks, you know, like a real thing. Okay. Um, so it's, it's made up of triangles. Now, what I've done by putting one of these uh, couches in the world is that that couch, it says here, SM couch, and it says it's a static mesh actor, if you see over there at the, um, at the right hand side. And that means it's something that can have a, a position in the world. And it's, it, it's created a slightly different entity, which is a static mesh actor, which sits in the world. And in fact, that has a property which is what mesh is being used and so i can actually change that particular object to be something else if i wanted to um, it's not something that you commonly do but the one of the reasons why this is important to talk about is because i can have more than one instance and that's the term that tends to be used of the same static mesh uh, so I've dragged the static mesh into the world that has automatically created a corresponding static mesh actor to be in the world. And if I've created another one, it's using the same static mesh, but there's two actors. And the important thing about this is if I make changes to the static mesh itself, those changes will apply to both of these couches in the world, or as many as I've put in, um, because this is effectively, it's in... Uh, Object-oriented programming terms. This is a class, and these are instances. 
Now, it's not quite that, but it's it's similar in that idea. Okay, so you can do some things with a static mesh, and Unreal has a, a separate editor for static meshes called the Static Mesh Editor, and I'm going to just double-click that, and it brings it up. Um, that could be in a different, you know, this is another tab. I've put it so that the tabs are together at the top here. Uh, now, you might think that a static mesh editor would allow you to edit the mesh and change the... Uh, change where the triangles are, where the points are, etc. Um, and that's not what the static mesh editor in Unreal is for. It's for doing other stuff around that. Um, so something that's very basic is to actually change the what's called the material, which is what gives us the yellow, the shininess, the kind of look of metal around the edge. Um, and in fact, uh, that's been... Uh, done up here we've selected this is another asset a material is a particular kind of asset and I'm just going to change it to let's change it to the checker tile and see what happens oh that's the kind of very basic uh, one I could change it to um, a nice kind of thing that looks it's meant to look like a bush it's been stretched weirdly and that's to do with uh, how the textures mapped onto the object which is a subject way beyond this video um, but if I make that change so that that um, bush, uh, that couch has got the bush um, uh, material, and then I save any changes that you've made, you need to make sure you save for them to actually apply uh, to the objects in the world. And then I'm going to go back into my, um, my level, and you'll see that because this mesh is being used for both of these ob uh, couch objects, that has been... Um, put in uh, it been applied to both of them as it happens you can actually individually change them as well so if you select one of the uh, selecting it slightly difficult because it's got holes in it select one of the couches here and in the details down here it also tells you what material is being used and I can change that back to um, the, is the, actually the chair one for one of those. So I've overridden the material setting from the static mesh with an instance in the instance here. So that I want to use in the chair. Now I'm just going to play and show you um, uh, the thing about collision. So something slightly odd, which I haven't got to the bottom of yet, is why you step up that little bit. But in any kind of real stretch, these, um, apart from that little step up, you can walk through the back. Collision isn't properly sorted out on these uh, couches. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to I'm going to deal with that. And I'm going to do it in the um, in the static mesh editor. So here we are. We've got the couch. Are we going to go back? No, we'll leave it as the bush. I don't really care. Um, uh, so setting up a collision mesh. That goes alongside the so the the visual mesh is what I've been describing the static mesh, um, but also uh, in order to do collision you need another shape, and that's the shape that's going to be used for collision. Now the simpler the shape you have, the faster your um, program will run because doing collision detection um, is complicated, and the maths of it get very complicated and you have to check a lot of things against a lot of other things potentially so you tend to try and keep these things as simple as possible um, and there are some options here under collision so if i add a sphere simplified collision that means it's going to work out what's the minimum sphere it can put around that and you can just about see those green lines if i come down a bit you can kind of see them against the white a little bit better and it's, it's put a sphere around it. And that is going to be the collision shape for this. Now, if we save that and go back into the world, uh, I can show you that in action. So go to one of these um, characters. And that sphere, you can imagine that. So that's not great because you're kind of bumping into it quite a bit further than you'd want to be. And what type of collision you use will depend on the type of object that you've got, the shape of the object, but also quite a lot on how big the object is um, because the complexity of it needs to be more for bigger objects 
um, because for tiny little objects you might not notice the difference uh, between a sphere or something else and some of the simplest uh, types of collision are uh, sphere which we've just had uh, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to uh, remove that collision because if I add a collision it will have two collision boxes um, there's capsule collision so what that looks like that's quite a good one for that shape because it's kind of long and thin so uh, uh, let's go and check that so save and go back into the world and so we're still a bit off the edge what we can't do is when we stand on it we're just kind of yeah standing in midair so that's not great for a couch um let's have a look at uh, other options so i'm going to remove that collision and there's oh, there's stuff here that's more complicated there's the box is the other simple one which will give us a box shape around it again that's not going to be great because standing on that's going to be at the top now there is a slightly more complex version that you can use uh, which is um again let's remove that one uh which is add auto convex collision and what you're gonna what this does is it works out something that is uh relatively simple but fits the shape quite well so you might have noticed that i've put that there and it hasn't actually created me a, a, a collision match you can't see the green lines the reason for that is because it hasn't calculated it yet we need to go down here and we can have different settings on here i'm not going to mess with these settings um and i'm just going to click apply and then that is going to think about it and create a collision match for us and we're going to see what that's like uh, so we'll save and then go uh, no, we don't want to do that. Back in here and play. All right. So, and we're actually standing pretty much on the bench itself there. And that auto collision, the auto convex collision, um, has done a really good job. Actually, is technically speaking, that's not perfectly convex it's actually done a bit concave uh, do I need to explain that uh, because where these arms are you can imagine it was actually if it if it didn't have any dints in it so concave means it actually has dints that go into the shape and it's it's kind of allowing that to happen here so that's that's working really well the last thing i'm going to do uh, just quickly on this particular static mesh actor is to go into physics uh, and uh, enable the physics simulation on that now that we've got the static mesh uh, the, the collision on it and see how that responds we so, see first of all it kind of moved a bit when we got into the world and then while we can jump up onto it we can also it acts like a real object in the world it acts like it's a little bit light for a real can't get it to I can get it to spin, can't get it back on its feet though. Yeah, so I'll turn that into a, an object that will react. Now you can't get that reaction working until you've got a, a collision mesh on it. And the way to get a collision mesh on an object is to do that in the static mesh on, uh, editor. So that's a, a quick kind of tour of uh, uses of static mesh in uh, in Unreal, we will be using static meshes loads more in the, the videos to come. Um, I hope that helps you understand what a static mesh is and kind of some of the basic uses of it. So that's it from me for now.